going to keep at this model of demand and supply. Before we move on, I want to introduce an idea that's not really been emphasized so far in either the textbook or in what I've said. In the chapters that we've just done on demand and supply, chapters 4 and chapter 5, the kinds of markets that we're looking at are a very specific kind of market. They're markets that we call competitive markets. Competitive markets are markets where there are lots and lots of buyers and sellers. The product that's being bought and sold is all alike, homogeneous. So you don't really care when you're a buyer whose product you're buying. The other feature that we did emphasize a little bit more is that buyers and sellers need to be able to decide to buy or sell, to enter or not enter, as they want, so that they're doing the best they can do in the marketplace. So these kinds of competitive markets we saw have an equilibrium where the marginal benefits of buying something for the last consumer equals the marginal cost for producing that last unit. What we want to do in this chapter is take a look at what happens when the government gets involved in the functioning of these competitive markets. Again, I'm going to emphasize that here we're talking only about competitive markets. The big picture from Chapter 6 is that if we have a competitive market and the government steps in and sets the price or imposes a tax, it's going to create a situation in which the marginal benefits to consumers at the quantity that's actually exchanged is not equal to the marginal cost to producers. And we know that if the marginal benefits don't equal the marginal cost, we're not going to be getting the most we can out of this market. That's the big picture. Marginal benefits have to equal marginal costs to get the most we can out of markets. And if the government steps into a competitive market, they're going to mess that up. 